Hello everyone, this is the Narwhal X10 Pro and this video is its review. I'm going to show you everything in it. I'll show you the machine, the docking station, its obstacle avoidance, navigation, mopping, vacuuming, so I'll show you everything. Stick with me. Well, here we are again with a topic I love to talk about, a robot vacuums, and not just any robot vacuum, but a narwhal. This isn't the first one I've had. In fact, this is the fifth type of narwhal vacuum I've had the chance to test. So you could say I've become something of a narwhal expert. In this video, you'll learn everything there is to know about this vacuum. We're not going to do an unboxing right now. There'll be a link up here where you can watch me unbox it. So let's dive right in. We'll start with the specs, then move on to the app, and finally, we'll see how the machine actually works. Specifications. Well, the Narwhal X10 Pro is the new mid-range machine, and it comes with a surprisingly low price tag. Despite that, it got almost the same docking station as the high-end models, the ZID series. So what does that mean exactly? It means this dock has both a clean and a dirty water tank. It also has a dust bag, which I'll show you. It's right here inside the housing. However, this vacuum, or rather this dock, doesn't have a detergent dispenser like the high-end Z series does. But the manufacturer says you can still add detergent to the clean water tank. You just have to be very careful that it's a non-foaming detergent. You can't use anything else. So you can add a little detergent to the clean water and you'll still get a properly mopped floor with this machine, even though it's not a high-end model. We get very large water tanks. Both the clean and the dirty water tanks are huge. This one is the clean water tank. Essentially, this means that if you have a medium-sized apartment, say around 90 to 100 square meters, you'll generally only need to refill the clean water and empty the dirty water every two or three mopping cycles or cleaning runs. Another important thing to mention about the dock is that it can wash the mops on the bottom of the vacuum, and it does so with hot water. It can dry the mops, and it's even capable of disinfecting or sanitizing the dust it collects. What about the robot itself? Well, I'm about to show you because I have the machine right here in front of me, and you can see for yourselves what, it's, what are the key things you need to know about the robot. Let's start with the top. I'll open the lid first because this is where we find the dustbin. The dustbin is relatively large, and what's really interesting about it, a feature since the first X Plus series, is that there's another container inside the main one, right in here. The purpose of this container is to compress the dust the vacuum collects. So, with this machine, since the dock has a dust bag and can empty the robot, you can set it in the app to empty the dust from the container into the bag after every single cleaning run. So it sucks it all out. Or you can set it to do this in smart mode. This is great because it can collect dust in this container for days. And when it's full, it sucks it all out at once and puts it into the dust bag. So that's what this device can do. Let's flip it over and look at the bottom because that's where the more interesting things are. So on the bottom of the machine, we find some very important things. Let's start with the main brush, the roller brush, which is a pretty special feature for Narwhal. You see, this is what's called a floating roller brush. Floating in this case means that the brush is only suspended on one side. On this side, it's not. If hair and fabric fibers get wrapped around it, they start to move down in this direction, unwind themselves and go into this opening here where they're sucked into the dustbin. Even if something happens to get stuck on the brush, it will end up here at the end. You can simply grab it, pull it off and throw it in the trash. So this roller brush is a really cool thing and it's one of Narwhal's great inventions that I really love about it. But of course, that's not the only interesting thing in here. We also find another brush a side brush, which is again a very interesting mechanism as this side brush can change its shape. This means that these bristles can move and the huge advantage of this is that hair and fabric fibers won't get tangled on it either because if they start to wrap around it, the brush neatly retracts and the fibers just come right off. And of course, then there's the mopping, which is a huge advantage of this machine. Instead of the old drag the mop behind me solution, this one has rotating mops. These mops spin at 180 times per minute and scrub the floor as they press down on the floor with 8 newtons of force. So these really do scrub the floor. Another huge advantage of this vacuum is that it has inherited the mopping system from the high-end models, the ZEET series. What does this mean in practice? It means that this mop on this side here can extend outwards and the vacuum can mop in places where older machines couldn't. 
You see, the side of the machine itself simply can't fit under the edge of a cabinet, for example. It can't navigate around chair legs in a way that it gets right up to them and mops precisely next to them. But with this solution and this mop, it can. The mop neatly slides out, allowing it to wipe the floor over a much larger area, a wider path than older solutions. What else can the machine do? Well, of course, it has sensors here in the front, here over there, and here on the side as well. The purpose of these sensors is to prevent it from falling down the stairs and to recognize carpets. The main purpose of this side sensor, of course, is to see objects that are next to the machine so it can avoid them. However, this machine has two more very important capabilities, two very important components that help with its navigation. One of them, of course, is the sensor called LIDAR, a laser sensor which it can use to map our apartment. But the Z generation has a very good capability, namely object recognition, taking photos, and the recognition and avoidance of very small objects. The question, of course, is whether this machine has that. And well, obviously, since this isn't the Z generation, but the X, so not the high end, but the mid range category, it received a different kind of sensing technology. And that is sensing with structured light. Sensing with structured light means that here at the front of the machine, we find a window, and inside the window, the machine projects infrared light onto objects. There's an optical sensor, which is likely some kind of camera, and it can detect this reflected light, or rather, it sees the light that the machine projected in front of itself. But what makes the light structured? The light is structured because it's not a simple light, like you'd shine with a flashlight, but it projects some kind of pattern onto objects. This is usually some kind of grid pattern, but it could also be a dot matrix. So this is a solution that, well, obviously can't achieve the same precision as the Z generation, which has a laser and a dual camera. So it doesn't see those objects. It can't recognize objects in the same way that machine can. But in any case, this also promises to be a good solution. But of course, the test will reveal just how good it is. A few very important figures are still missing. Well, the suction power is what's essential, 11,000 pascals. And the battery capacity, and well, the fact that with this battery capacity, the vacuum can clean about 120 square meters in one go. So in any case, these are good specs and well, very good mid-range specs. However, it's not just the hardware of this machine that's very good, not just its dock that's very good, not just the vacuum itself that's very good, but its application is also very good. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So. The thing is, Narwhal has a very, very good application, which, in my opinion, easily competes with the Xiaomi application. And in fact, in some respects, I think it's even better. So this is a very nice looking application. It's very easy to use. It has an insane amount of settings, which can sometimes be a daunting task, since you'll likely have to browse through all these settings to set everything up properly. But let's see what this application looks like. If we open it by tapping on the vacuum, the map immediately comes up. And here you can already see the map that I created of our own apartment. I've placed the furniture in it, the hallway cabinet, the TV stand, the dresser, the dining table, the coffee table, and the sofa. Those are the main things. We have a kitchen, a living room, and a hallway that I mapped with the vacuum. And well, I tested the vacuum in these areas. It's definitely important to point out that with this machine, we find two main types of cleaning modes. We find two main cleaning modes. One is the normal manual setting. The other is the Freo mode, which is also in the machine's name. This is an incredibly good thing. I really, really like it. You see, Freo mode works by sensing the environment, sensing the amount of dirt, sensing what kind of floor, carpet, or other surface it needs to clean. And based on that, it sets everything completely automatically. The water amount, the cleaning intensity, how many times it needs to go back to a given area, how strongly it needs to vacuum, it dynamically changes the vacuuming strength. So it essentially sets everything for us. And this Freo mode, it really works great on these machines. It already worked great on the previous X Plus. It obviously works perfectly on the Z generation. And now I know it works great on this machine too. So if you don't want to mess around with the settings too much, just leave it on Freo mode and let the vacuum go and do its thing. After all, it's a robot. That's exactly why it's a robot, because it can do everything robotically on its own. But if you do not want that particular option, you can simply choose the straightforward manual mode instead of the Freo mode. And in manual mode, you are able to set, for example, when vacuuming, exactly how many times it should perform the operation, once, twice, or three times. Whether you want quiet mode, normal, strong, or super powerful, which is the strongest. And you can also set how densely it should cover a given area. So essentially, you can adjust the vacuuming intensity. But similarly, for the mop, you can set the mopping, the water amount in three levels, how many times it should pass over the area, 
and how densely it should pass over the area. It's very important that for mopping and vacuuming, you can choose between two types of options. Vacuum and mop, which means it vacuums and immediately mops in one go, or vacuum then mop, which means it goes around the apartment, vacuums everything, and then in a new cycle, it mops everything. I usually use this one. I think it's much more effective, much more efficient than when it vacuums and mops at the same time. Of course, obviously, besides this, there are tons and tons of settings. As I said, as you can see, I've already set up the furniture here, for example. You can set which room you want to mop and how many times you want to mop that specific room. You can set what furniture there is where there's a carpet. There's also a 3D map view, for example, which looks really cool. So there are all sorts of solutions in this device, in this application that you can fine tune. Besides that, of course, here are all the settings. There's map management. We can manage four maps. In the base station settings, we can set the type of drying, what the default cleaning mode should be, and we can set how often the dock should empty the vacuum. So we have lots and lots of setting options. Perhaps the only thing that might be a bit of a pain for many of us or for you is that this application doesn't speak Hungarian. And well, the vacuum cleaner itself doesn't speak Hungarian either. It speaks English in a female or male voice, which you can select. By the way, you can, of course, integrate it into a smart home since you can integrate the vacuum into the Amazon Alexa and Google Home applications. So ultimately, as a smart home device, it can be linked to all kinds of other operations. So there's no problem with it in that regard. I really, really like this application, and I think it's one of the greatest treasures in this device, uh, precisely the application and the intelligence it has. Okay, well, we can move on from this then. Now you know what the machine can do. You've seen the application, you've gotten to know the dock, and you've gotten to know the vacuum cleaner. The next part is about the cleaning quality and how the machine navigates, how it sees its environment. Well, I have good news and bad news here. The situation is that, unfortunately, this structured light thing so it was predictable that it wouldn't be as good as the Z generation, since that one has an extra laser and two cameras that create a 3D image of objects, while this one only has this structured light. Despite this, it actually works quite well because it sees relatively small and flat objects well. It can go around them. It doesn't run them over. For instance, I put a remote control in front of it, and it didn't see the remote as a threshold, for example, and didn't try to go over it. Instead, it saw that there was an object there and nicely went around it. With larger objects, again, there was no problem. I put down an apple, a child's shoe, and a box, and it nicely avoided them. It bumped into the box just a tiny bit, for example, but it has a collision sensor on the front, so it only touched it very lightly. This means it won't damage chair legs or furniture legs by crashing hard into everything. It went around everything beautifully, staying barely a centimeter away from it all. It went around the apple so delicately that the side of the machine almost touched the apple the whole way. So that was perfect. The only thing that wasn't perfect was the phone charging cable. Despite the fact that I didn't just leave it spread out on the floor, but I even coiled it up a bit so it would be more visible. Unfortunately, the machine didn't notice the charging cable, and on several occasions it ate it, meaning it ran over it, the brush wound it up, and it got stuck. So in this respect, this machine is definitely worse than the Z generation because it doesn't cope so well with these charging cables. What was the cleaning like? Well, to put it mildly, I put it through extreme tests because I scattered a huge amount of flour, rice, and cat food for the vacuuming test. And this, well, I won't say on the first try, but let's say on the third try, it was able to suck up this amount and get it into the dust bag when it returned to the dock. So the vacuuming test was perfect in that regard. The big question is what the machine can do without detergent dispensing because I deliberately tried it without adding any detergent and mopped the kitchen with just water. For this, I spilled a brutal amount of ketchup in the kitchen, and it actually managed to handle it for the most part. And by for the most part, I mean that it essentially mopped the entire kitchen with no visible trace of the ketchup left. But since I spilled an insane amount of ketchup, a little bit of it did remain on the mop, and a very, very fine film-like layer was left on the floor. And when it dried, you could feel a very slight stickiness in the kitchen. But I'll say it again, this was an extreme test. So in a normal situation, I don't think anyone would spill half a bottle of ketchup in their kitchen. If a drop, two drops, or say 10 drops of ketchup spill and need to be mopped up, that will be absolutely no problem. After all, as I said, this machine has the Z generation's mopping function, except for the detergent-based mopping. But if you put detergent into the clean water tank, 
a non-foaming detergent, then you'll likely get the same mopping system with detergent and all as the Z generation has. What are the negatives and what does it have less of than the Z generation? The mapping accuracy is somewhat worse, so the floor plan of the rooms won't be as accurate as with the Z generation. It doesn't recognize furniture, so you have to manually add it to the map. With the Z generation, the vacuum does recognize quite a lot of furniture and automatically places it in the room. The Z can do these things and the X cannot. Besides that, there was also the issue of not recognizing the cable. Unfortunately, it went over the very, very thin cable. It didn't see it in front of it and got it tangled up. You definitely need to pay attention to this if you buy a machine like this and leave it to clean alone at home. Another disadvantage is the lack of a detergent dispenser. But as I said, this can be fixed or worked around by adding a little detergent to the water. Many people mention it as a disadvantage, and let's admit that there's some truth to it, that the dock is quite bulky and you do need to find some space for it in your home, which might not be easy everywhere. I can list one more thing, which is that after mopping, when the wheel gets a little wet, it can happen that it can't enter the dock on the first try because the wheel slips and can't get a grip on these grates at the bottom of the dock. In those cases, it takes three or four tries before it can get into place and start cleaning the mop and then drying it. And that's about it. I can't really say anything else bad about the machine. And now for the best part of this whole thing, which is that because of Black Friday, you only have to pay 136 to 138,000 forints for this machine, which for a machine that's at the top of the mid-range, almost scratching the surface of the high-end category, it has 11,000 pascals of suction power, it has rotating mops, and it comes with a docking station that has dirty water and clean water tanks. It can wash the mops with hot water, and it also contains the dust bag. And, well, it has the kind of software you've already seen. So I think that for this machine, this price is ridiculously low. If you'd like to purchase it, you'll naturally find the link in the video description where you can buy it, and the coupon code will be there as well so you can get it for less. If you enjoyed this video, then check out the other two videos appearing next to me. There'll be Narwhal videos as well. Of course, subscribe to the channel, and well, come on back because I'll be back soon with more tests. Until then, take care, and bye.